Okay, so I had a question from a chap on my bioenergetic support group uh, on Telegram, and he was asking for more information and theory about the bow posture because for him he doesn't seem to be doing so much. And I thought, what a great question! Let's make a video all about the bow posture. Something to remember about bioenergetic static postures and the bow posture in particular is it's not really about it's not really about just getting the posture perfect. Like say, for example, if you were doing yoga, you know, you want your body to model that of the teacher, this kind of thing. It's not quite the same in bioenergetics. What is important is that you are pushing or pressing in the right place. So that's a good thing to understand because sometimes your body might do something quite differently from what the instructor or the book or whatever is doing. And what's actually important is not to try and model the picture, but to be pushing in the right places. That's how you get the benefit from bioenergetics. Okay, so that said, let's just take a look at our bow posture. We're gonna stand with our feet about shoulder width apart, or maybe a little bit wider, and the outsides of our feet are roughly parallel, and our knees are bent. Now your feet don't, the outsides of your feet don't need to be totally parallel, but you're not pointing outwards too much. And they're very important to keep your knees bent and your knees should remain bent throughout the whole of the bow posture. And it's good to check that because it's a kind of brain defensive reaction when a certain level of feelings or energy is stimulated to lock, to lock the breath, lock the diaphragm and lock the knees, to block the feeling. So we don't want to be doing that. So let's take a look. So from standing with my knees a little bent, I'm going to bring my arms right up above my head with my palms facing forwards. And then in one movement, I'm going to push two areas, which is push the pelvis forwards and squeeze those arms, keeping them straight, squeeze them back. And this starts to activate muscles. This is very important with the upper arms to activate muscles around the shoulder blades and the lower part of the neck. And the pelvis activates muscles around the lower back and possibly around, you know, your belly here. And then in this posture, because remember, in bioenergetics, it's not just about the posture. It's also about, okay, we want to breathe right and we want to remain feeling our body. So then in this posture, breathe by pushing your abdomen out. Trying to keep your whole throat airway relaxed with your mouth slightly open. Keep seeing if you can get a little bit more out of the posture, squeezing a little deeper. Keep breathing and remain feeling your body. If you find yourself spacing off somewhere, come back and feel your body. So what we're doing is we're putting, we're putting controlled intelligent stress on certain muscle groups and we're breathing and feeling at the same time. I know I bang on about it a bit, but it's very important not to just focus on the posture. Also, posture is important, also have the breathing and the awareness of the body. Those are the three key elements. Something especially interesting about the bow posture that I've noticed from, because I ran workshops a lot, or before the COVID times, I was running a lot of workshops uh, with whole groups of people, is that everyone does it a bit different and that's okay. And also that there's a category of people who've got a lot of flexibility somewhere around the mid back, which I don't have, so I can't demonstrate this, but they're leaning back and from here, their whole, their whole upper body is stretching right back. Now for those guys, to stretch so fully back may not be beneficial. You may need to hold it more like this. And then breathe and feel, breathe and feel. Another point of the posture, which is not so often mentioned or acknowledged, is that you will see some people who close the chest in the, in the bow posture, they bring their shoulders slightly to the front. This reduces any sensation of rising vulnerability, which is mediated in, in our heart center area around here in the middle of the chest. So we don't want to do that. We want to keep the shoulders back. So the chest, you have this feeling like your chest is open. You are exposed. When the chest is more open, we feel okay being more vulnerable. When our chest muscles are closed, then it's like we have to protect ourselves from any kind of vulnerability. It doesn't feel okay to be vulnerable. So we're really pulling those shoulders back. That's very important. 
Another very important point of posture is to stretch back with the arms. Like I said, because I run this in groups a lot, or used to, then it, you know, it's kind of a good environment to watch lots of people doing these postures. And what you notice is a lot of people pull their arms a bit forwards. They avoid the confrontation here. And again, this is happening because there's so many very powerful emotions stored around the shoulder blades and the lower neck in this complex of muscles here. So you must maintain the pressure there. Maintain the pressure, breathe and feel. It's actually, like most static bioenergetic postures, really a meditation. It's really a meditation we're doing here. Another important area of the posture is relating to the angle of the head. Because I tend to teach it facing forward, so your whole body is going into this bow shape, but your head remains upright, your neck is upright, and your eyes are open looking straight ahead. It can also legitimately be done looking slightly up. I prefer it looking straight ahead because it creates more pressure on some of these muscles here, which can help them to open, but it's not the only way. Something you can also add to the bow posture, once you've, you know, don't go charging in, adding things in a kind of, oh my God, I've got to get it straight away kind of attitude. That attitude is, a, is, is, is coming from anxiety and it reinforces anxiety. You don't want to do that. But when you've got it, when you have got the bow and you're happy that you've got it and you've been working with it for say a month or two, you can work with something like opening your mouth really wide whilst you're doing it. So kind of like you're a teenager and you just want to get some triple burger in in one, you know? And if you do that, keep checking the other parts of the posture. Are those arms right back? Pelvis pressing forwards, knees bent, chest open. And then breathing through your mouth, check also, of course, that you're feeling your body. You're not just clinging on there, waiting for the, waiting for the end. You're feeling your body, you're breathing as well. You can add the jaw stretch, and if you want, you can add a jaw stretch and eyes wide open as well. Those are, those are classic things that you can add. Some people also make sound. You don't necessarily need to make a lot of sound, but you could, you could make sound on the out-breath. The useful thing about making a gentle sound on the out-breath is it tends to help keep us in the body. The vibration somehow keeps our awareness a bit more in the body, so that might look like... Uh, uh, So we're just making like a relaxed R sound, we're not putting a lot of energy into it. But that vibration helps to keep the awareness in the body, which is what allows processing to happen. Okay, so that's the bow posture. Now, another uh, thing I can include is um, counter stretch and all postures that go along with the bow posture. And let's just take a look at, in fact, two of those. Because the classic one is called the arch, and actually what I should mention is that these terms can be a little bit interchangeable. Different schools tend to use different terms, both for the bow and the arch. Some people will call uh, what I'm calling the bow the arch and vice versa, or they will call what I'm showing, what I'm calling the arch, the ground reach, blah, blah. So you always need to kind of, if you're looking at material from different schools, just ideally look at a picture, just to make sure what they're actually talking about with these two postures, that some of the terms haven't got interchanged. But with the arch, you're gonna bring your feet closer together, and you can even point your toes slightly inwards, which is easier when your feet are closer together for the average person. And then you're slowly hanging forwards. And that, and that does is quite strongly evocative on the lower back. I'm not gonna demonstrate it here because you, you can see it in other of my videos, and this is all about the bow. But this is a classic kind of stretch to the bow. And it will be much more evocative getting feelings out of the lower back. And so most people, you know, it's rare to find someone, you know, write a message saying to me like, oh, I'm doing the arch posture and it's not doing anything. Usually we'll be doing something. We will be aware that, you know, it's a challenge to stay in this posture and that something is happening. The other stretch that I like to often integrate with a bow and arch sequence these days, actually, in fact, because, you know, dissociation from the body, the leaving pattern is such an issue in society and it's getting worse and worse and worse, is the shoulders raise. Which means basically pulling your shoulders up towards your ears, keeping your arms relaxed. So this is a great posture to integrate into the sequence as well. You know, every morning you can do, in fact, I do this every morning, do the bow, you come into the shoulders raise, and then you go down into the arch, and you do two or three repetitions of that 
on like a one minute, two minute, three minute ding, whatever you know you can you can bear. And with the shoulders raised posture, you know it's it, like I say, running groups. It's extremely common to see people drop this literally within two or three seconds, pulling the pulling the arms up. You know we think we're aware, we think we know what's going on, but when you do the shoulders raised posture, and if you're teaching a group you will soon see just how quickly people's awareness drops away and they're just kind of dropping those shoulders halfway. You need to maintain that stretch and you also need to check that once again you're not locking through the knees. Because a lot of these defensive reactions, lowering the shoulders, you know, locking through the knees, holding the diaphragm tight or whatever, you know, closing the throat, not really breathing, you know, a lot of those things are mediated by our brain's defense system and that tends to operate subliminally. In other words, it operates underneath our conscious awareness. So our conscious awareness is like, yeah, I'm doing the posture, you know, it's in this kind of arrogant ego state. But if you were to see a film of yourself doing it, you'd be like, my God, I'm totally not doing the posture. And that's very common. In fact, in the, the old days a bit of doing, doing some therapeutic exercises and Osho dynamic meditation, it was quite common for the person running the thing to film people and then later on, you know, a coffee break, have a, have a look and a good laugh at, at you and everybody else thinking they're doing these postures correctly and you see like, my God, I'm like totally not doing the posture. It's really quite strong. So if you've got a little bit of a tendency to say, yeah, of course I'm doing the posture, then you may well find if you actually check yourself on video or in front of a mirror, you're really, really barely doing the posture. So I do recommend that. Okay, I think that's about all I've got to say about the bow posture. I hope you found this video useful and interesting. Do check out my books on bioenergetics and Reiki and therapy on Amazon. There's a link below. And I've got online courses and paid for content and all that kind of thing. Okay, cool. Thank you so much for tuning in and I'll speak to you again very shortly.